everybody. I'm Michael. I'm here today with Phil, one of the owners of Florida Nursery Mart, and we're going to go on a garden tour, a nursery tour. So, Phil, Amy, Stephanie, you guys ready to dig in? Sure. Let's go. Phil, can you tell us a little bit? Butterfly. Awesome. You guys are going to be in for a treat today, by the way. So, let me go back to what I was trying to say. Phil, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the great products and services you offer here at this nursery? Yes, of course, Michael. So I'm one of the owners at Florida Nursery Mart. Um, horticulture and plants is basically my life. And nice. uh, we, we try to, to, to give the customer a little bit of everything as far as choices. And you're in Cooper City, Florida. We're in Cooper City, Florida. So it's like West Davy, right? Yeah, Griffin Road, directly on Griffin Road. Not far from from just about anywhere in Broward, at least. Yeah, yeah, close to the interstate. Yep. No, or, or the expressways. There's also, you have a really cool layout of your nursery. Could you tell us a little bit how it's laid out? Sure, we have hard goods out in the parking lot, soil, sands, rocks, mulches. Um, we also have a, a large selection of native plants. Nice. We have, of course, uh, a, a good trending uh, selection of house plants in a, in a large greenhouse. Nice. Uh, we have a shade plant section. We have a ground cover section, we have a vine section, we have a catch-all section, and we carry <laughs> lots of shade trees and ornamental flowering trees. Wonderful. I'm so excited, I can't wait to see Yes, it. and they also have garden ornament in their office behind me under this wonderful pergola they have. So what we'll do now is we're gonna go and show you some of, this great some of the great plants and products and services they offer. All right, let's go on to that. Okay, you guys, look at this entrance. Isn't that fabulous? Okay, we're at the entrance pergola, right, Phil? And to the right of Phil is your annuals, water plants, and house plants beyond. So let's go take a look. Alrighty. What would you say? Okay, so I like to do this with everybody, Phil. On annuals, what are some of your favorites? Well, the, the nice thing about being in South Florida is our annuals are, are year-round in a sense. We have yeah. winter annuals, which we're, we're seeing here right now today. And yeah. then uh, when summer comes around, we have a whole nother set. So, yeah, you got the so it's hard to there. say what are your favorites because yeah. uh, we, we do have so many great options available. And in the intro, I'm a sucker for these guys. I love them. Geraniums are incredible. These make cool houseplants too. I did some videos on that. And then you have this for those folks who want to have a nice little water feature. Sure, and you don't need a pond necessarily to have. Yeah. To have, yeah. a, let's say, a water lily, you can have a self-contained. Um, sure container oh, oh. That, that holds water. Look at them, they're all in bloom. Whoa. Oh, I don't know if I've seen what variety is this? I don't know this one, Phil. This one, I believe, is going to be called Midnight Serenade. Wow. That's a pretty dark purple. <laughs> wow. Um, so there pretty. Are many off. Yeah, we yeah. have pinks, we have yellows, whites. Oh, how nice. We're kind of entering our ground cover section now. Um, anything that's fairly low. Oh well, you're gonna get you're gonna get butterflies here with the corky stem. You're gonna get, definitely get the zebra. There's there some. you go. There's, there's a gulf. <laughs> oh, there's a gulf. The <laughs> about to lay eggs on it. There you go, everybody. This is a butterfly magnet plant. We did a video on this a while ago, but this is the host plant for this beautiful butterfly. We did not plan this. We are not paying this butterfly to provide these services. This is free of charge. That's a wonderful plant oh. because not only does it attract Look uh, the that. Gulf fritillaries, but it's also host to Julia butterflies yes. and Gulf, the uh, zebra heliconias. The zebras, yeah. the zebras are so, so, so dynamic, but, oh, and you know, do you, well, we'll get that in a minute. And right next door, we have scorpion tail, which, which yes. is an awesome nectar source for the uh, So it's a, it's a one, two. Butterflies. So yeah, they don't have to travel too far. Yeah, you basically, your whole nursery is a butterfly garden. It's a, it's a haven. This is amazing. Oh, so nice. Some more begonias, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, then you have sedum. Oh, frog fruit. Here's another one. Fruit's super cool. Tracks butterflies. Tough, low ground cover. Tough, low ground cover. Look at the flowers on this, on the twin flower too. Cool. Cool Florida natives, low growing. This is so glad, I'm so glad you have this reed stem orchid. Yeah, the epidendrum. They're super, super tough. They're super tough. And how would you say, Phil, on flowering, how wow. often do these flower throughout the year? 
I would say when you're talking about orchids, it, it probably flowers more than any orchid I, I'm yeah. familiar with. Um, yeah. At least nine months of the year, I would I would say. And you know, it's look at this. Frequent. This orchid's out in full sun, and these aerial roots, you can pinch these off and plant them, and they will grow. That's that's correct. They're they, one of the easiest orchids you could lay your hands on. Yeah. They're you know it has. It kind of fools me from afar. It look, kind of looks like the, the milkweed in the flower color. Similar, yes. But it's it's such a cool plant. I've seen these used before, and it, you can use these in raised planters or, or decorative pots, and they look so nice. And sometimes when they flower, they're profuse with the amounts. This is doing a great job here, but I've seen them where they just really take off. Such a cool, such a cool plant. Huh? <laughs> I didn't know this. You have variegated pineapple, or is this? This is a young pineapple. It, it, it oh, actually get won't out be sun. variegated, but uh -huh. it is a delicious edible. Right. Um, and right next door to it is a, is a pretty interesting native uh, blue mist flower. Fantastic uh, nectar source for, for all kinds of butterflies. Yeah. And then the mimosa too, the sunshine mimosa, another Florida native. The mimosa, yes. This flower, this flower is just crazy on the mimosa. That's and this is the, a... this is when you touch the leaves, they'll kind of like they start to close. Yeah, like a sensitive. Like plant. a sensitive plant. Fun for the kids to, to interact with. Yeah. And is this the rose that you were talking about earlier? Yeah, Louis Philippe. It's a fantastic rose. It's a climbing type. It's an old fashioned rose, meaning it's, I think it dates back to like early 1800s. Wow, wow. So, so it's been around, it's proven, it's tried. Did you just, did you catch a scent of that? Stephanie, can you come up to it and tell me what you think? It has a nice little fragrance. Whoops, watch the step. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful plant. Not many. I, it's there's some friends that I know that have that collect roses and and have them throughout their yard, and they are in love with them. They have so many different types. I think Belinda's Dream. You also offer we that have, one. Do you? We have that one as well, and we carry those two primarily because they are they are tried and true in South Florida. Tried and true in South Florida because uh, we have that humidity. You have yep. sometimes those issues with roses, but and and Louis Philippe doesn't necessarily need to be grafted, which okay. is which is uh, important uh, because we have nematodes in the soil. Yeah. Uh, so that's another bonus to having this this type of rose in your garden. Right. And beyond, you have the Bismarckia palms, which are that looks like Bismarckia. Is it Lantania? They are actually. Um, I'm going to butcher this name. Copernicus. And they get very large. Um, oh. And in a young, you'll see you'll see a great stand very, of very, them. Very, very, very thick trunk. Yeah, you'll see a great stand of them at. Um, These Fair are Child. not inexpensive. Yes, that's right. These are not inexpensive. Well, Fairchild okay. has a great stand. Okay, of them. everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to need to save up a few salary for these. There's nothing wrong. Look how spectacular they are. My friend John Farrar, who I went to school with, I believe he has two in his front yard, and they're now 20 feet tall. They kind of look so similar to a Bismarckia. Yeah, at this wow. stage, yeah, that's that's what most people say is they're Bismarcks. Um, but yeah, yeah they'll, they'll definitely, as they mature, they, they look quite different. Wow, how nice. So here I am just panning around looking at all these. We're not going to touch base on all of them today. There's so many, but we'll show you some more up close in a minute. But wow, look at, and then you have the, oh, the Imperial Bromeliad. I love this Bromeliad. It can be in sun or part shade, right, Phil? That's, that's correct. It's almost like an agave in the sense that it's kind of bulletproof. Yeah. Well, it's not bulletproof in that our, in our Miami Shores home, I wanted to have these out. And so in the front of our house, I planted two. These are three gallons. Right. And I could afford, a, I think I, I could afford at the time a seven gallon because th these have a price tag, but they're wonderful. And there's and there's there's value in putting the right money forward because these are, these are really tough plants, except when they're not bulletproof, when they get stolen overnight. And the <laughs> only thing they stole out of our yard, whoever you are, <laughs> they took two of them out there and I was so sad the next day. There's dirt in a big hole and they took our Imperialis so that never became part of the design. Oh yeah. It's just a wonderful strong accent plant, you know? It is. The colors are stunning. The foliage is stunning. The overall texture is awesome. Yeah, yeah it's um, great. It's a great element to add into your landscape. And we'll be, we'll be doing some videos on palms and I see you have quite a few back there. You have the Eureka. Correct. Uh, which, have... is, which is a cast iron plant, right? Yeah, it's it's again it's it's 
it does the job in a lot of the uh, you'll see these are the backdrops for weddings inside plants are tough they're great for that you know they're like a, a a more affordable version of a kentia correct they'll make a neighbor disappear which is <laughs> they <fantastic>. will <laughs> and you don't have to trim them yeah i like planting them actually if you have like a like a royal palm under a royal palm and them underneath it getting some part shade because they don't yellow the leaves don't yellow as much right they say bright bright green and i love that about them but yeah really good for for screening and behind us behind phil is your shade plants can we go take a look let's take a peek so obviously as the name says these are plants that tolerate shade and do well in shade um, not as many flowering types but we have foliage types sure. back in here many of these are great make great house plants yeah quarter lines are a staple in the shade yep the shade area we have a pretty cool variety called bolero as well yep um, beautiful gingers birds of paradise oh your your uh, iris is in bloom oh look at that wow look at this you all wow Do they call this one also California alocasia sometimes, or is this a similar one? This is similar. It's also obviously a, an alocasia. It has a, a bright yellow stem, and this this does yeah. get pretty monstrous. So uh, bigger than the, maybe the California, because the California has a. This looks so similar to me as the California alocasia that I right. remember buying. Yeah, growth a little more ruffly. Correct. Almost. Yeah, growth habit is similar. Uh, ultimately, the color is what, what yeah. makes it different. But striking in a garden, if you have some some shade of course and you've got the marginatas this is the tricolor yeah tricolor or colorama colorama um, that's very, right colorama these are cast iron even the standard yes. standard um marginata amy and our and let me turn around amy remember the side yard of our house yeah. fort lauderdale mom had the marginatas that were growing where she would park her jeep oh, right. and mom taught me all you had to do is just break a stem and stick it in the ground and they'll grow that's right yeah, super tough, but great. And you got gingers flowering in the background. Let me go scoot mm -hmm. over there. I'm a sucker for flowering plants. I can't help it. Look at that. Red ginger. Nice. Look at this, you all. Yeah, so South Florida is so cool because we have so many plants that offer a tropical vibe. Yeah. Wow. This is basically our logo. We use the orange bird of paradise in the background because I absolutely love this plant. It's iconic. They couldn't steal this one in our yard because we <laughs> put two of them, we put them in a big container. So those, those stayed in. Wow, so behind us we have some more. You guys just got to come over here and check this out. Is this the... Um, the cone, red button. Red button ginger, yeah. These are super tough. I found yes. these to be super tough. Definitely. And they get quite big. You know, I, I ours, ours when we had ours um, years ago, I think one plant was probably about four by four. Maybe not four feet tall, but what would you say it gets to? Yeah, five foot, there four, we go. Four or five feet is, is, yeah. uh, is yeah. typical. And uh, once they're a mature age, that. they're, they're um, they're ever blooming at that point. Yeah, they're just constantly putting out the blooms. So cool. And then some heliconias, the lobster claw, the classic of, like this is like King Kong of yeah. flowers. I just love, love lobster claw. to do wonderful it's just so many guys mm -hmm. okay so now we've gone through this little quick run through what do we have over here uh, pottery so have, yeah in our greenhouse we have oh we have a good mix of pottery a lot of mexican style we have asian style uh glaze terracotta it's a little bit of everything yeah and we saw some of this in, in your uh, office too on the wall great Correct. great assortment look at all this Wow, nice. And over over here, your house so, plants. These right, are basically your house plants. Entering some house plants. Okay, wait, um, <laughs> hold up. Sorry. Um, you didn't tell me about this, Phil. What? So we, yeah, oh. we have, uh, this is a, I don't know if this started the whole trend or not, but this is one of the early, I guess you could say, uh, most valued house plant that came along. Oh, it went crazy. Yeah. 
Now it's 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 not the Thai constellation, or is this it? This is the Thai constellation. This yeah. is the Thai yeah. constellation. Okay, yeah. so now, now it's going to be all of my paychecks for a whole year. Well, but what is it? What 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 is your price, if I may ask? So we offer these at a good chunk of change, but I would say it's still a good deal. But I I'm going to say we offer the cheapest in a smaller pot. Um, I, we we offer for fifty dollars, which is kind of unheard that's, of. That's that's unheard of. Yeah. I, Look at this, you all, it's so beautiful. Ugh. You have some? We have them right here. Oh, look at that. So they're, they're just um, putting on kind of a, a more mature leaf yes. now. Yes, over time. So, wow. <laughs> but yeah, that's... Wow, that's amazing. That's that, a great price. I know that well, these are in six inch, six inch pots. Bill? Yeah, these are six and five inch that we have. And look how price. healthy they are. Look at all this new growth, you guys. Yeah. And it's like this buttery smooth leaf that comes out on the on the monsteras. And every leaf is different, which is it's yeah. fun to, to kind of watch them as they emerge. Great house plants. I, and these are great in your garden is too, but I'm telling you, this is showstopper. Amy, Stephanie, what do you think of the the variegated monstera here? Big guy. Big? Oh, yeah. Cool looking? Almost like you should family. So fun fact, my good friend Kelly Dresser in college at the University of Florida, and we were studying plants in one of their landscape architecture uh, uh, classes, and we had to go over the botanical name for this, and the botanical name is Monstera Deliciosa. This would be Thai constellation, right, I'm assuming, yeah. right? You're right. And so I couldn't remember it, and she's like, just think of it. It's all chewed up. So think of a monster chewing the leaves Monster finds it delicious. That's why he's eating the leaves. And I never, never forgot it since then. I think yep. that's going to stick with me too. So yeah. Monstera <laughs> Deliciosa. Thank, thank you, Kelly. Oh, I, basically, I, I don't know where else to go in your nursery because I can't get past this. This is so <laughs> cool. So we've got a ton, a ton of wonderful houseplants. Sure, we have lots of Money tree. Yep. Lots of Sansevieria, beautiful plant. Wow. Oh, these are Pots some of the end. toughest house plants. Oh, moon. Moonshine. Look moonshine, at the right. Wow. Phil, these are beautiful. Is this this is the like a Metallica Cylindrica or So this is uh yeah, they're always coming out with new varieties. Um this one is Bantel Sensation. Oh, Bantel Sensation, that's right. Yes. Very similar to the Metallica, but much more uh, smaller leaf but yeah, upright. But real striking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are wonderful. Oh, the, the starfish. Right. <laughs> uh, They're everywhere. Yeah. The, this is, oh, I'm telling you, I just love it. One, wow. I don't know this variety, Phil. What's this one? This is a hybrid, uh, relatively new. Uh, I think it's Tiger Zabrina. Um, Goodness gracious. Yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely wow. an oddball. Look at that, you guys. But this would be more for like a potted in your patio space or do you think I, you could I think put this does, in a home does it need more humidity yeah think? i think i think outside is probably better uh, yeah and in shade as well yeah wow just wonderful and then we have the tanikis absolutely love this plant have one in our home and a whole bunch of your uh silver queen or silver bay yeah aglaonemas and other varieties Oh, what's this? What's this cool one? Silver thicket cactus. It actually uh, <laughs> will get more silver. Uh huh. Um, and it's, turn around it's here. Obviously, very pokey. Yeah, but very but fun. striking. Yeah. Wow. What I love about our industry, the nursery industry in general, is that they're always inventing or inventing or hybridizing or coming up with varieties that that we can use safely in the environment. We don't want invasives, but. Right. But what, oh, and here I go again. Network plant, absolutely love that plant. One of my favorite ground covers. Peperomia, yeah. We have the Florida native, and I don't know if the variegated is a native because I never see it on any of the lists as a native. I don't know why it wouldn't be, but I guess it's it's not considered, but it's safe to use. And another cast iron plant for the home, the ZZ. Right. And the ZZ Raven, mm -hmm. nice. staghorns wonderful wonderful assortment here phil okay so now let's go check out some of your native shrubs is that all right sure sure we can
So as the name would suggest, this is the the concentration of our native plants. Although we have them right. scattered throughout the nursery, this I'm is a large section. I'm going to scoot around you guys for a sec, Phil. You can stay there because of the sun. I want to make All sure right. everyone can see. Cinnamon bark, cool, small tree. Love your, love cinnamon bark. Awesome little red flowers. Yeah. Red berries as well. Sweet Babe Magnolia. This and Little Gem. Yes. That scent of that magnolia, wow, it just knocks your sock off. Such a cool Yeah, it's kind of scent. lemony. Divino. Divino. Por favor. Oh, it smells nice. Look at that, guys. It's a beautiful flower, too. <laughs> With the uh, sweet bay, you have the silvery underside. Yeah, beautiful, especially in the wind, when they're mm -hmm. rustling in the wind, you get to see that. Look at that, it's so nice. And it does have the iconic magnolia flower that are kind of lemon scented. So this is where my sister goes off script and she starts looking for her yard <laughs> and she wants to get started. <laughs> You have to come closer to us so we can hear you because we got the mics over here. I'm so sure. I was. I said, oh, that's uh, purple saliva. And I'm like, no, I think it's salvia. salvia. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I oh do, you, right. do you have allspice by chance? Allspice is going to be on the other Okay, we'll catch uh, up to that. Road over here, yeah. Because we like to check that one. You have pampas grass. So, so the natives are, let me go back here. You still yep. have your sancor grass. You have a lot of natives here. Native, this is the involcrata, right? Yes, these are the Involcrata, which have white flowers, and then they'll get yeah, uh, these beautiful. fantastic little purple yeah. berries. Beautiful. Um, so you have essentially a wonderful nectar source for butterflies. And, and you bees. get to see the butterflies all around us. So here we have a monarch, there's, there's a monarch. cruising through. And the other one everywhere. It's wonderful. Yeah. Beautiful. Lots of different native host plants, too. Yeah, like so the many. Cassias. That firebush, they get. Huge. Yes, and wonderful for bringing in the uh, the hummingbirds and yep. and really all yeah. kinds of butterflies as yeah. well. Yeah, it's a good screening, good screening plant too if you want to have a buffer. But uh, but the pyramid flower, I haven't used a lot of these. But look at that purple, beautiful. What do you see a lot of people want to use these as, Phil? So it can be, it's kind of versatile even though it's not well known. It's got bees um, coming in like crazy. Oh, it's got a, pollinators. It's a like pollinator magnet. For pollinator sure. magnet. Wow. And it, even hummingbirds will visit it. Really? Oh, it, yeah, it has like that trumpet's shape opening. Wow, mm -hmm. that's so cool. It's fantastic because it does have a unique leaf. It's kind of silvery underneath as well. And then you have ever blooming little purple flowers. Pineland Croton, wonderful native. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> right there, the bees are like, okay, coming it down. Wow, they're just going at it. I could spend all this day here. This isn't colorful like the other traditional crotons that I'm used to? Correct, yeah. yeah. The, the croton uh, name comes from the genus, uh, which is croton. And these are, native, a little these are native to southern Dade County okay. uh, and in the Everglades. Yep. Oh. We like planting them when we're doing like a pine rockland setup where we do a slash pie. We'll use some of the pine link croton, the involcrata, the, the depressive variety depressor, the native yellow lantana together. I see you got Bahama coffee, wild coffee too. Sure, we have oh, Bahama coffee, here's wild, wild coffee. coffee. Ta-da! Even the uh, the Solzner eye, which has a few common names, which are these here. Taller. Taller. But but and this coffee will coffee get pretty beans? tall too. Oh, of course. Uh, red berries, which um, which aren't used for coffee, but okay. but yes, uh, kind of similar in the, in the leaf shape as well. Mm -hmm. But in part sun or sun, but I like putting them in part sun myself when mm -hmm. I design with them. They do so well. Super low maintenance, I found. They are. Yeah, if there's a if there's a spot where you have a problem growing anything, this this will <laughs> usually grow there. Yes, right. <laughs> nice pigeon plum, another Florida native. Jamaican caper, one of my favorite understories. Oh, here's the lantana we were just talking about. Yeah, that's a native lantana as yeah. well. Real nice. Yeah, Jamaican caper, super tough Florida native. It has this satiny look. Stephanie, if you pull the leaf up so I can film it, you can see the underside. And feel it. See how feel the little hairs on it. 
little like it's like a satiny fuzz. I guess that maybe helps with it, like the buttonwoods and keeping it uh, from drying out. Sure. This is the Kunti. Awesome. Love, fantastic plant. Love this plant. Can you tell me what what you like about this plant yourself? Well, we it, it, it checks a lot of boxes. It's yep. it's a native first of all. Yep. Uh, it's not exactly a palm, it's a cycad. Right. Uh, it doesn't grow a trunk, it stays relatively short. Correct. It will grow in full sun, it will grow in full shade. Yep, um, drought tolerant is for just drought like crazy. tolerant, and it's also host to a very important butterfly, the, the Atala butterfly. The Atala butterfly. So it, it checks a lot of boxes, like I said. And the Atala butterfly is one of my most favorites. I, I don't know, I'm, 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 I can't say that. I have like tons of best friends and tons of favorites on things, but the Atala butterfly is this beautiful black butterfly with these really cool blue dots and this red belly, but it's the clumsiest butterfly I've ever seen. It just, they'll bonk into you as it tries to get to the plant. And I've done a video on this and there's so, I've, I've, I've literally been able to get them on my finger because they're just sort of like looking for stuff, doing their thing, but they're so cool looking. And it, this is a very tough leaf. And that I was able to catch them with them, uh, the caterpillars uh, on a whole huge big design I did Phil for the parks department at awesome. our, our main office. And the caterpillars, this is a very tough leaf. They chew right through that like it's like it's paper. And it was amazing how these, these plants adapt because plants sometimes put toxins. This, by the way, you don't wanna get the, your pets around the seeds because that can be an issue. But plants do toxins to keep insects from, from attacking them over the eons. But the, the butterfly has learned to work through that and the caterpillar can chew right through that with no issue. God. Purple fire spike, this is great butterfly tractor too. It is. Wow, all look kinds at this. of butterflies and, and hummingbirds are frequent visitors as well. Oh, I love your plant stock, Phil. It's so nice. <gasps> Great hibiscus. I have to do a whole video with you and some or some friends with this because there's so many people are so interested about hibiscus because there's so many different, you know, color types oh, sure. and shapes. It's just, oh, I love this plant. I don't know if you can see it, Michael. A red admiral butterfly just landed on the hibiscus back oh. there. They're kind of skittish. There, right towards you, Stephanie. <laughs> nice. That's a nice little treat. Yeah, wonderful. And basically, it's you have some warblers having a ball. Yeah, our nursery is alive. <sighs> I'm sorry, you guys. I, you know how I am. They're so animated. They're so much fun. Wow, just beautiful nursery. So get this is like your catch-all. You have the emmas and the other crinums. These are great striking plants to use in the landscape definitely and you guys offer your own design services right we do That's and we great. appreciate what landscape landscape architects do like you michael and sometimes it's out of reach for some people so uh, we offer an affordable I, design service as well i have seen some of the best designs not from landscape architects from folks who have studied horticulture who just have an, an innate ability to be in touch with nature and i've been so impressed we learn a lot from each other of course that's a big sulfur, right? Yeah, I think that's the um, large orange. If wow. I'm not, not mistaken. Beautiful. And uh, the white found grass, absolutely love this. Super tough, as is, is on the red. And you have so many grasses. You have the, the native fakahatchee, the dwarf fac. I don't know if that's over there. That's actually a lemongrass, but we do have. Oh, yeah, lemongrass. Yep. Stephanie, come here. I want you to try something. Can we? Of course. Pick a piece. Stephanie, can you pull this piece and crush it and tell me what you smell? Just pull, break that piece off. Got it, there you go. Yeah, pull. rip it right off. There you go. Now crush it up in your hand. Just crunch it, crunch it, crunch it, yeah. And then tell me what you smell. You really got to crush it. No, now I smell my. I got it. I got it. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah! If you smell my fingers. Yeah. Yeah, lemongrass. You can use this for cooking. Absolutely. This is you safe for cooking, you all. You get this tea, like an edible garden. Tea. Oh. If you make soups, they were in soups. Yeah, you just got to crush it like that. Oh. Does the scent keep some pests away? That's another thing yes. you can do. You can extract the oils. Uh, you can boil the leaves to make a, a lemongrass oil that you can use as a natural insect Mos repellent. Like a mosquito. They say this is this is good to plant to keep mosquitoes away. And Michael, you'd asked about oh. the Belinda's dream. We have uh, some flowering right in here. Wow. The rose. Wow, look at this, you all. Mm. Wow. 
Panama Panama, Panama Rose. Rose. Yep. Really cool. This has a cooler scent at evening time for me. That's when I tend to pick it up. I don't know why if it's Yeah, it's it seems to be evening only and, and most people don't don't know that, but uh, it's a wonderful almost like perfume yeah. fragrance. And flowers like this all the time. I've seen it do really well. It gets can get quite bushy. You got three to six feet. That's about right. That's what I've seen them grow to. Yeah. They've got a wonderful display at Morikami Gardens if you've ever oh, gone through there. Nice, yes. And cast iron jatropha. Absolutely love this soup. Not not native, but butterfly magnet flowers all the time, right? Correct. And you have a do you have do you sell that? There's a pink version too. Do you have we that? often have a pink one? We have um one they call pink lemonade and one they call oh, watermelon. So okay. now there are like two. Nice. Oh wonderful. And then here's the Louis Philippe that we saw earlier, right? This is the other right, yep. the other um, rose that you recommend for folks in South Florida. Sorry everybody, I'm going back to the Gulf. Pentis, super butter, big butterfly magnet, and um, wonderful three gallon specimens you have here, nice. Oh, we could be here all day, I'm sorry. I'm taking up so much of your time. Thank you, Phil. No, no worries. Butterfly bush, and then do you have tropical almond? There it is. We Sweet might, almond bush, We have right? one only right now, but <laughs> not well, blooming, of course. Or maybe there are a few. That's actually a white butterfly that's, bush. That's a white butterfly bush, yeah. This is but, the white al the almond. There it is, the yeah. Flowers are pretty much expired. But it has a wonderful scent. Oh, it does. This has a great scent, you all. Very much a magnet for butterflies as well. Definitely. And I think when we first came in here, I think I saw, <laughs> I saw the passion vine, but I think I saw a, another one flowering, a red. I think it's up there in the corner. We'll sure, go there in a, a sec. Yeah. Nice. Look at this, you all. You have several, right? You have the... Yeah, we try to have a different selection of uh, passion vines. So the corky stem we saw earlier in our, our tour with you... Right. Oh, I had the butterfly on it. And now we're just looking at the lavender passion, but you also have some more over here, which is just pulling in the butterflies. This is the Lady Margaret or a different one? Oh, it is. This is, uh, yeah, so we have Lady Margaret Oh, Lady Margaret here. here. And this is a newer variety. Oh, okay. Because uh, this looks red. similar to the Lady Margaret, but but more of a starburst. Would you right. say starburst right. shape? Right, more open flower, yep. Wow, look at this, you all. Super cool, super tough plant. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanotis, oh, the flowers on this are great. They are. What are these guys hungry for? What are, what are they up to? Ah, uh, they could be looking uh, for a mate. Yeah. And then they are they are obviously laying eggs and, and eating this passion. Oh yeah, oh, the passion. Here. We have a, a little monarch. Oh crystal. wow, look at that. Oh yeah, you see it's hanging right under there. I wonder if I'm pointing to it for you. Wow, how cool. Yes. Cocoon. Incredible. Yeah, just passion by so this is some of the most amazing flower types to me. I just find them so exotic looking. They are intriguing. Tough, tough vine. We really love them. And then over there, we I could see fruit trees beyond. Can we go take a look at those? Of course. By the way, this is your office and tools and supplies, right? Yeah, we have tools inside, some nice. pottery, um, fertilizers. And this way will be the fruit trees over Okay. Here. Trinette. One of the toughest ground covers, by the way, as we walk through here, super tough, as is the Clusia. Right. Just, and love, love the portocarpus. You can keep this thin and narrow and do a great, great screen. Absolutely. But we're talking about fruit trees. We have some here. This is the tangerine about oh. to bloom. I wonder if I can pick up the scent. Not yet. Love these as kids, our neighbor had them and they would let us come by and we would constantly just eat the tangerines <laughs> in the McFalls yard. They had a tangerine in the backyard. That's a good neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we, we were, I had four brothers. We're a family of seven. We were running around like maniacs. There's one of seven. So what 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 type of fruit trees do you do We have do a lot of different there? tropicals. Of course, okay. avocados. We have uh -huh. a big group of avocados, mangoes, squavas. Nice. Um, Bananas. You mentioned allspice yes. earlier. This is a, a cousin. This is bay rum. Okay. Um, which kind of has, we'll check it out. Yeah. Ooh, a nice, nice fragrance as well. Yeah. It's very nice similar spice. to to all spice. My turn, my turn, please. <laughs> I'm a sucker. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Nice. And strong. Mm, yeah. Oh, you guys, it's like to have these in your garden. But all spice has a similar, right? Uh, a similar um, scent. It it's also in the same family as clove. That's right. Yeah, That's definitely, right. Amy. You picked that up. 
is this a satin leaf? It's so this is in the same genus as satin leaf. This is um, native to Central and South America. This oh, is, it doesn't uh, have the the silvery underside. Not as, as much. much. Um, oh, here in the new maybe. And then yeah. and then this is a, a fruit tree called Caimito or Star Apple. Oh, okay. Um, so a lot of similarities to satin leaf. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a satin leaf. Song of India, another mm -hmm. super tough uh, sun or shade we right. found. But some more fruit trees here. What, what, sure, what, tamarinds, star Some fruit, more tangerine, more grapefruits. grapefruits. So what, what do you recommend? Because I've been talking to the IFAS folks about citrus greening. Sure. Yeah, do you know what, what people... It, it's an evolving just, matter, yes. Yeah, like um, maybe just get good healthy plants, I think. And start, start with good healthy plants. Good healthy you plants. You probably need a spray regimen. Yeah. Um, I hope they come up with... Um, some solution because yeah, it's such a, such a breeding, tragedy. Right. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to uh, find ways around the, and then I the do problem. This, this tree right here is uh, allspice. Yep. Can... Want to try this leaf? Okay. This is the allspice. Oh, okay. Excellent. Oh, yeah. It definitely Sim smells very similar to the other one. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, the sucker for that. The, spices in the lemon. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You got so many. That's so great. And then you add the. So you have like, you could get the. You have the everything for your senses here as versus visual. You have it at your nursery at Florida Nursery Mart. Phil, you've got the, the roses with their great scents. We've got the beautiful allspice, bay rum, and if we cut around, I think we've basically touched base on. Your nursery. If we cut back this way, oh, sorry, you guys. <laughs> you know me. Look at that. And yellow. I don't know for me, Phil. Yellow hibiscus. I love the white and the yellow. And yes. There's paints and stuff like that, but that yellow with the red center. What variety would this you call this? This one, like a... I believe, is called Fort Myers. Fort Myers. Yeah. Oh. And then, um, like every year, there are new uh, varieties as well. Yeah. It's about, what, a 24-hour bloom cycle before another one comes back out? Yeah, and fortunately, they're, they're usually loaded with buds. So. Yeah, so as one goes down, you all, it's just part normal for the planet, and a new one will come spiraling out like that. Beautiful. Wow, butterfly bush are nice. There are some gardenias here as well. Oh, yeah, this is my favorite scent, for real, of all. Actually, the Gardenia Amy, A-M-I-E-E. -E, oh, very large. Like your name, but spelled a little differently. That's my favorite, one of my favorite gardenias. The flower scent of any plant is the Gardenia. Just a, just a stunning, stunning scent. I have two in the front. On the, the, the Starburst, uh -huh. these are cool. These are one they typically flower, right? Yeah, this, this is a, usually a late winter bloomer. But they and, do uh, look a little leggy. I don't, I have to let clients know about these guys because afterwards, because this is so powerful, it goes to a, like a... It's a short transition. It's a transition period yeah. where they, they look a little funky, but just as long as you're aware of that, and you, if you love this flowering group, which is amazing, it's a good, cool plant to Change is good, you know. Yes. If, if they drop, drop leaves, that's okay, they'll come back. Right, right. And you have, okay, so this, Emerald Blanket. Why do you why do you guys like to carry this one? It's it's pretty durable. It's, it's yeah. very very drought tolerant. Yep. Um, this one stays relatively low in yep. comparison to other carissas. Yep. Um, so love it this plant. Does fill a need. It was it was our go to plant before Green Island ficus came on the market. And that makes sense because Green Island was just it was just grows a little bit faster, and it's super tough like this plant. But uh, these have these little thorns that you have to just be be aware of. But not as bad as the as the larger Correct. varieties I did years ago, but really tough, tough plant. Bottle palm or spindle? This is a young bottle palm. Yeah, beautiful. And it, it doesn't, it's not a very, very large palm. It just, it, it can be in a pot forever. Right. I found really cool, nice, beautiful. Simpson stopper, tough for the native, right? Absolutely. It can yeah. be used as a hedge, can be used Bingo. as a small tree. Absolutely. Um, underutilized, I think. Could, I've been specifying the heck out of the Simpson and the Spanish stopper. I love yes. I love the Spanish stopper yes. because they get a little taller and I love using them to screen um, property lines. And, and they have really interesting things. bark too that peels once they get larger. Right. Some more reed stem. 
super tough. Cape Honeysuckle, wow, wow. And here's the Green Island Pike as we're talking about. Bigger, bigger leaves, but this is what I've seen a lot of folks specify in lieu from when it came onto the market over the, the Emerald Blanket. And then some more super tough, non-native, but these Chefaleras are cast iron, as is the red-tipped cocoa plum. Right, and it's native. And this is a Florida native, wonderful Florida native. Yeah, specify these a lot. And you can see red, they call it red tip for this. New leaves come out red. And when they trim them, if you're trimming the top, all the new leaves will come out red. So you see this big fiery red top to your heads. All right, here's more Belinda's drink. Oh, Stephanie, yes. Here's another one, Phil. Wow, beautiful. What a fantastic nursery. Thank you. We can't thank you enough, Phil, for taking the time today. It's been, it's been so much fun checking out all these wonderful plants that you have for sale. If you have any thoughts or questions, Stephanie, what are they supposed to do? Leave a comment below. Yeah, and other things we always want them to do. Like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions for Phil directly, we'll leave you the information like we did in the intro so you can call them and you can come out here and take a look at all these wonderful plants. So yeah. I really want to thank you. Thank, thank you so pleasure. much. Thank really you guys appreciate for coming. it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, thank and you. I mean, the butterflies, it's just, guys, just to come here to see the butterflies. It's it's just, it is, it is. All right, until the next video. Bye. Bye. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And tell your friends and family. We post videos weekly. Thanks.